let's take a look at the attrib command. Here I am on Ubuntu. In this case, I'm on Amazon Web Services. Any Linux command line will do. You can also see I'm the root user here. So I'm going to go ahead and use pyco. I'm going to create a file, and I'll call this myfile.txt. And I'm just going to write uh, the numbers 1, 2, 3. I'm going to save it. I'm going to close it. If you're in my class, pause the video, get to that point where we do an ls, and we see that we have the file. Files not only have permissions, we talk about in another video. They also have attributes, and those attributes can be displayed with the lsattr command. So I can do lsattr within a directory, and it will show me all of the files with their attributes. Or I can do lsattr on a specific file, and it will show me just that file. Again, in this case, we get the same output, and you see we have this long series of dashes here. And each one of those dashes has a specific letter or an attribute that it represents. And by default, we just have the E attribute. Now, we can do an lsattr hyphen L, and it will spell those out. So this is the extents attribute, is the only attribute that has been associated with this file. So if you're in my class, I have a link to this Ubuntu uh, man page for lsattr. Uh, this is the chatter command, actually. Um, we use the lsattr as ls attribute, and we can use chattr to change those attributes. And so this is the man page for chattr chatter. Um, I'm going to hit a control F here, and I'm going to look for single quote E, single quote. And it's going to take us to that E attribute that we just saw here. And the attribute indicates the file is using extents for mapping the blocks on disk. It may not be removed. So there we go. All of our files are going to have that default. We're going to take a look at some of the different attributes uh, that are available that we can work with. And when we look at all of these hyphens here together, what letters could possibly be there? Here's a graphic that kind of shows those. We have append. It could be compressed. Uh, it could be exempt from the dump command when, uh, if you were to go through and run the dump command to do a backup, you could exclude this file from that backup by um, adding the D attribute, for example. So here's a list of all of them. And again, they're also in this man page here. Uh, we can read about what each of those are. So let's start with the most common one, which is the immutable attribute. And so I'll add uh, chatter. And I'll do a plus i myfile.txt. I'll do an lsattr, and you can see that immutable, the i attribute, has been assigned. If I do an lsattr hyphen l, we can see that it's been, we get our full word there, immutable. So there's no question about what that is. And so that means the file can't be deleted. So if I were to do a chmod 777 myfile.txt, uh, we can't even change anything about the file. We can't modify it right now so that we can delete it. So if I do an lsalh here just to look inside of our file, our folder, excuse me, we can see that uh, root has read and write permissions here. We are the root user, so we should be able to delete that file. So I'll do an rm myfile.txt, and it'll tell me permission denied. If you're a Cyber Patriot competitor, you're going to run into this. You're going to look at the permissions. You're going to try to erase it. It's not going to let you. You can't get in. You can't edit it. You can't do anything to it. So this is a chatter minus i situation, myfile.txt. And now if I rm myfile.txt, I'm able to do that. So I'm going to recreate that file one more time. Let's look at some other attributes. The append only attribute is one that you may have to be familiar with. So if I do lsattr myfile.txt, we see we have that standard extents attribute. Let's do a chatter plus a myfile.txt. And you can see here that. Um, It is append only. So if I pico into that file, 
and let's say I try to append inside of Pico, right? I hit enter and I want to append some text, four, five, six. And I hit control O to save, it's gonna tell me down here, operation not permitted because we didn't technically attempt an append operation here. Pico looked at the file and attempted to rewrite that file based on what it has in this buffer. So Pico isn't appending anything, it's rewriting the file and writing to the file is disallowed through the append command but we can use redirection here we can use our two greater than signs so i can echo four five six and if i cat real quick my file.txt you can see it only has one two three in it if i echo four five six and i use my two greater than signs which represents append my file.txt it's going to allow that operation because we've enabled append only we're able to append to that file there we go so I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna chatter minus um, a my file dot text and I'm gonna get rid of that append attribute let's look at the secure deletion attribute real quick so we'll find this in the man page um, we can add chatter and we'll look at what it does here chatter plus s my file dot text if i do an ls a t t r my file dot text we can see that we have our s attribute our secure delete attribute there and again hyphen l my file dot text is going to tell us that secure deletion is enabled so what does that mean later on in the course we'll get into disk forensics a little bit but when you delete a file on disk, if I were to do an rm my file dot text and I type ls, we can see that file is gone, but now it's been securely deleted. Let's talk about why that is. And this is grossly over, this is very broad. Let me put it that way. Um, so we have, uh, with a file system, whether it's FAT32 or uh, EXT3 or 4, whatever it is, you're going to have a file system table at the beginning of the disk. And that file system table is going to contain a list of pointers. So when you try to read to a file or write to a file, uh, the operating system is going to look at this file system table and it's going to ask what node, what block, where is that file on disk? And so this is essentially like a database of positions on the disk where we need to read things. So for example, if I were to run the ls command, it's user bin ls, let's say, in this case, this uh, gross generalization here, um, we can see that, okay, the ls command is gonna start at maybe inode 700 or block 700 or wherever. And so the disk will move over to the actual contents on the disk and we'll find that position and we'll start reading in the zeros and ones into memory so that we can start to execute that program so that we know where it is. Same thing for this home Ubuntu myfile.txt. Let's assume it's at block like 1400. And when we get into Sleuth Kit later on, we'll look at this a little more specifically. Um, home Ubuntu myfile.txt is located here. And let's assume that we've got some zeros and ones there that start at block 1400. So I examine where it is and then I can go and I can start reading. Well, if you just run the RM command, what we're doing is we're deleting the entry on the file system table so that when we run LS here, it looks and it doesn't see anything uh, that relates to my file.txt. So essentially that RM command without secure deletion just deletes the reference to the file in the file system table. But if we enable the secure delete, it not only deletes the entry that's in the file system table, but it goes in and it will take these zeros and ones that will still exist at block 1400. If a forensic investigator were to go in and look, uh, it would be, you can identify that at 1400, there, there's a text file there even though there's no entry for it in the file system table. With secure deletion, it'll go in and it'll write all zeros over any 
places on the disk where the file existed. So secure deletion now, if a forensic investigator after running that RM command were to come in and look at this disk, they wouldn't see any trace of that file. Um, it would not be recoverable because we have all zeros written out, not just um, in the file system table, but also the actual location of the file on the disk. Again, I was generalizing quite a bit there with that description. Uh, but there's one other command that uh, looks like secure deletion, but it's not. And it's the undeletable. It looks like immutable, but it's not. It's the undeletable attribute. So if I were to do a C-H-A-T-T-R plus U, and I just recreated my file.txt after deleting it. Um, this undeletable attribute is one that you should look up because uh, it says undeletable, but if I just prove that it's there, we have our U. Um, if I try to RM my file, you can see that it did indeed get rid of my file. So even though I set undeletable, it's able to delete it. Um, there's a, I haven't, I don't know how to do this, but I do know that in this case, the user can request now, it was sort of thrown into a recycle bin, and the user can request that that file be undeleted. So that's what the U is. Those are the big ones, uh, immutable, append, secure deletion, um, and undeletable. Again, if you're interested in all of them that are there, there's uh, a whole list. Um, Take a look at that man page and thank you for taking the time to work through this video.